On a day blessed with steady trade winds, we come close to the most famous of the Leeward Islands, Bora Bora. It has changed a little since the time when French solo sailor Alain Gerbeau used to sail there. But it remains very spectacular, in particular from above. On this islet, close to the airport, for a long time lived famous French ethnologist Paul-Emile Victor. After a life full of icebergs and blue lagoons, he has set sail for other skies. His son Teva has settled nearby on the small islet, where he rents a beautiful house to people who dream of being alone on a small deserted island. On Motu Teva Iroa has recently been built a superb hotel belonging to the pearl chain, one of the most important in Polynesia. The bungalows on piles seem to be a dream of all the tourists that come to Polynesia. A tourist mecca in Polynesia, Bora Bora remains surprisingly peaceful. Gauguin's name and silhouette are used on the island's shops, although Gauguin never set foot on Bora Bora. No visitor would ever leave Polynesia without buying at least a few brightly colored pareo. You'll find some for sale all around the island. <laughs> if you look for a more sophisticated gift, there are the black pearls that we have seen cultivated in the Gambier and in the Tuamotu. Of all sizes, all kinds of hues, they are turned into jewels, and all sorts of works of art. In the Leeward Islands too, religions take an important place. Several churches rise at the foot of Mount Pahia. On the wharf at Vaitape can still be found the tomb of Alain Gerbeau, one of the solo sailors that once gave me the idea of doing what he did. Another historical spot of Bora Bora, on a point on the eastern shore, these guns date back from the Pacific War. A souvenir of the American Navy, Second World War. Bora Bora today is the residence of several artists. One of them, Gary Kirandi, has installed his studio at a short distance from Vaitape. He welcomes his visitors in a beautiful Provençal looking house. It's a pleasure for me to meet him again when I return to the Leeward Islands. His fame has widely spread to distant countries. Garrick tells me he has galleries in the USA, but he prefers to live in Bora Bora, and he's happy like that. Another resident of Bora Bora too has very nimble fingers. He has created the small Museum of Marine. For years, he has dedicated his day to the construction of magnificent models of ships of all eras. Royal galleys, tall ships, not forgetting a series of small, famous sailboats. These, he tells me, are the sailboats of famous French solo sailors. It's true that Bora Bora's lagoon has received the visit of numerous solo sailors, from Bernard Moitessier on his Joshua, to Anna Gerbeau on the Firecrest, or Yves Le Toumelin on Kourou. They have all been charmed by Bora Bora. I do not know whether there is one island in the world that's as spectacular, seen from above, as Bora Bora, the lagoon, and the ring of motus that surround it. The colors of the depth of the bay next to Pointe Matira. The small islets in the lagoon. And most of all, the extensive sandbanks with unreal color. They seem to sketch out the profile of a benevolent figure. I've nicknamed it the Lagoon's Genie. May he watch for a long time on the island.
Here comes the end of our trip. We'll take along with us the image of one of the most beautiful pearls in the Pacific, a true jewel of turquoise set in the ocean's deep blue, this fragile wonder, the island of Bora Bora. <laughs>